So in this lesson, we're going to be looking at standing waves on string instruments, and those are transverse waves. We'll look at how standing waves are set up. We'll look at the difference between standing waves and progressive waves that set up those standing waves. We'll look at harmonics on string instruments. We'll look at what resonance means and use the definition in the context of standing waves. We'll apply that theory to exam questions. Then we'll go on to see how the tension and mass per unit length of the string affect the speed of the progressive waves that set up the standing wave. And finally, we'll apply the equation that links tension and mass per unit length to speed to example questions. So firstly, let's have a look at how standing waves are set up. So when you pluck a string, or cause a string to vibrate, you get a progressive wave travelling down the string. At the other end, the fixed end, it reflects, and it reflects with a phase change of 180 degrees. This creates two progressive waves that travel in opposite directions. Notice they have the same speed, frequency, and wavelength. And as the waves pass through each other, they interfere, superposition, producing a standing wave of nodes and antinodes. You'll notice that the nodes are points which remain stationary and the antinodes are points which oscillate to maximum amplitude. You'll also notice that all points between nodes are in phase with each other and these points between these nodes are out of phase with these points by 180 degrees or half a cycle. You'll notice that when the progressive waves are in phase we get maximum amplitude on our standing wave because the progressive waves are totally constructively interfering and the amplitudes add up. As we move through one cycle, slowly, you can see what happens to the wave. So the progressive waves pass through each other, the amplitude of the standing wave drops, and believe it or not, when the progressive waves are exactly 180 degrees out of phase, we get total destructive interference. If we then keep moving, we've now gone through now half a cycle altogether where they're back in phase and we get total constructive interference. If we continue, this is now another quarter. And then if we continue up to the top, we've gone through another quarter and we're back to where we started, which was a whole cycle. The final thing you'll notice is the amplitude of the standing wave is double the amplitude of progressive waves. So let's now have a look at the difference between standing waves and progressive waves. You'll notice, first of all, that if we look at energy transfer, with the progressive wave, the waveform is moving and so energy is transferred. Whereas with the stationary wave, the wave front is not moving and therefore energy is not transferred. So with the progressive wave, all points oscillate to maximum amplitude, as you can see there. Whereas on a standing wave, only points on an antinode will oscillate to maximum amplitude. Finally, with phase, you can see that points a wavelength apart are in phase with each other. Whereas on a standing wave, all points between nodes are in phase with each other, and points either side of a node are in antiphase with each other. I'll leave you for a minute to look at those diagrams and read through again. So what I've done here is I've set up the standing wave and I'm filming it with a strobe which is at the same frequency as the string is vibrating so that the standing wave looks stationary. If I now use the light strobe to strobe at slightly less than the frequency of the standing wave, you can now see the motion of the standing wave. You can see the node which remains at zero displacement all the time and the antinode, which is oscillating to maximum amplitude. You can also see that points between two nodes oscillate in phase, and you can see points either side of the node oscillate out of phase by 180 degrees. So let's now have a look at the harmonics on string instruments. 
So the first thing to do is to turn on the signal generator. That's going to produce an alternating current which causes this to vibrate. And if you watch carefully, I'm going to increase this until we get our first loop. So that is our first loop. Now that loop is 80 centimetres. So that's 80 centimetres the length of the string. And this loop is half a wavelength. So from that, we can work out the speed of the wave because the frequency is 33 hertz. So to draw our first waveform, we have two nodes at either end and an antinode in the middle. This is the fundamental frequency, F0, also known as the first harmonic. The length of the string between two nodes is half a wavelength. Now the length was 0.8 meters in the practical and the frequency was 33 hertz. So the wavelength is going to be twice length of the string, which is 1.6 meters. This gives us speed is frequency times wavelength, multiply them together and you get 52.8 meters per second. So let's now have a look at the second harmonic. Now what we can now do is we can go up to the next set of loops and work out the speed again. So this is the next set of loops. And actually, we've doubled the frequency to 66 hertz. And you'll notice that we've now got a whole wavelength on that length of string. So we've actually halved the wavelength by doubling the frequency. It's still 80 centimetres long, but with a frequency of 66 hertz, we've got a wavelength of 80 centimetres. So in order to draw the second harmonic, you need three nodes. So the length of that is a wavelength. And the second harmonic is given the symbol F1, and that was 66 hertz, double the fundamental frequency. The wavelength is the same length of the string, 0.8 meters, using V equals F lambda, gives us the same speed as before. I quite often put in the antinodes, but also the arrows on them to show which way the wave is actually moving. So you can see that one side is in antiphase to the other side. So finally, let's look at the setting up of the third harmonic. So what we can do, we can finally check our speed again by going up to three loops, which should be three times 33, which is 99 hertz. and we're there. And you can see we've now got three loops and that is actually one and a half wavelengths. So from this we can work out the speed again and we should get the same answer. So with the third harmonic you need to have the two nodes at the end and you need two nodes in the middle. The length of the string is going to be equal to one and a half wavelengths which is 3 over 2 lambda. The third harmonic is given the symbol F2 and that was 99 hertz three times the fundamental. The wavelength is going to be two-thirds of that length so that's going to be 0.533 meters. Using the same equation we have speed is frequency times wavelength and we get exactly the same value as before. So whichever harmonic we use, the progressive waves traveling down the string are 52.8 meters per second. So the next thing we look at is what is resonance and how we use the definition in context of standing waves. Resonance is where you force an object to vibrate at its natural frequency. I love this video, it's very old, but it shows you how you can use sound waves to smash crystal glass. Here's a slightly more dangerous demonstration. What I've got here is I've got a signal generator to make some noise, goes to an amplifier and comes out with this rather strange looking loudspeaker. So let's put some sound on. For this experiment Trevor needs to generate a specific frequency. He puts little bits of paper on the rim of the glass 
and he knows when he has reached the correct frequency when the paper jumps off the rim. As with all experiments dealing with loud noises, ear defenders should always be worn. Here it is again in slow motion. favourite clips. Another quick example of resonance is in microwave ovens. So how do microwaves cook food? Well all foods contain fat and water molecules and at one particular frequency the resonant frequency of the water molecules the water and fat molecules absorb the energy carried by the microwaves. This causes them to vibrate more and so heat up the food from the inside. So to use this idea of resonance to explain standing waves in exam questions, you need to clearly state the following things. First of all, resonance occurs on a string when it is forced to vibrate at its natural frequency of resonance or multiples of its natural frequency. And this occurs when the length of the string is a half lambda, lambda, one and a half, two lambda, etc. of the progressive waves that set that standing wave up. So before we go on to look at tension and mass per unit length, let us quickly apply what we've learned so far to two exam questions. What we had here in the exam question was that an oscillator was moving up and down at a frequency of 50 hertz. Pause the video, answer these questions. So the key with lots of these questions is you've been given the length of the string and therefore you can work out the wavelength. Remember that one loop is half a wavelength, so of course the wavelength is two loops, which is 0.8 meters. Using the equation for speed is frequency times wavelength, we get 40 meters per second. The second question was calculate the period of the standing wave. Well, period is one over frequency, so that's one over 50, which gives you 0.02 seconds. The final part was draw the waveform at a time 0.025 seconds later than this position. Remember the standing waves are just moving up and down, so that's a quarter of a cycle, half a cycle, three quarters, and a whole cycle. So the key to this is to work out how many cycles the standing wave does in that time. So if we take that time and divide by the time for one cycle, we get 1.25 cycles which means a standing wave would go all the way down to there for half a cycle, back up to there for one cycle, and back to here for a quarter of a cycle afterwards. So that means that your string is going to be flat. This is the second part of the question. The fundamental frequency was 108 hertz in the first part of the question. So to do this, we need to first of all sketch the station wave produced. So we're told the distance between nodes is 0.16 metres. So we've got to put the rest of the nodes on. And as you can see, we can now draw the waveform. So the second part is calculating the frequency of the overtone. It's only worth one mark, so it's one statement. You can see that this is the fourth harmonic which means it's going to be four times the fundamental frequency, so 432 hertz. So we can now have a look at how tension and mass per unit length affect the speed of the progressive waves and the equation 
that allows us to calculate the speed. So I've got here an old kid's violin that I found in the attic. You can see here it's only got three out of the four strings, but the principle is the same. We're going to look at how we can change the pitch of the note, and there are three different ways of doing it. We've looked at the length of the string, and I'll show you that one first. So if I pluck this string here, and then if I put my finger on it, I only cause this much to vibrate rather than the whole length, and the pitch goes up equally. Now you'll also notice that the higher strings are thinner because they're thinner, which means the mass per unit length is smaller. And finally, the other one, of course, is tension because we can tune them. Now I've just tuned these, uh, but I can now untune this one here. So if you listen carefully, if I use the top here and I tighten the string, You can hear the pitch go up. If I loosen the tension, the pitch goes down. Now, both the tension and the mass per unit length actually affect the speed at which the progressive waves are moving up and down here, which then will change your pitch. And we're going to look at that in more detail now. The equation for the speed of the progressive waves is the square root of tension divided by mass per unit length. So you can see that if you increase the tension, the speed will go up. And if you increase the mass per unit length, because it's a one over relationship, the speed will go down. Mass per unit length is just calculated by taking the mass of the string and dividing by its length, because it's measured in kilograms per meter. We can also represent this equation in symbol form, where we've got the speed is equal to the square root of the tension divided by the mass per unit length, which is given the symbol mu. So finally, let's apply this equation to an example question. Here we have a string which has a mass of 0.15 kilograms and a length of 0.6 meters, which is passed over a frictionless pulley of weight 100 newtons. This provides a tension of 100 newtons on the string. Pause the video and have a go at this question. So mass per unit length is just mass over length, which gives you 0.025 kilograms per meter. Now the second bit is to calculate the speed, and you may have first thought of using this equation, but of course we don't know the frequency, so we have to think of another equation to use, and that is of course velocity is the square root of tension over mass per unit length, and that gives you 63.2 meters per second. Part C, if you draw the fundamental on to the string, it looks like that. Part D, what's the wavelength for the fundamental note? Well, this is half a wavelength, so the wavelength is going to be double that, so that's 1.2 meters. Then finally, calculate the frequency of the fundamental. We have to use the equation v equals f lambda. Rearranging gives us frequency is velocity over wavelength, which gives us 52.7 hertz. So let's quickly review what you should now be able to do from this lesson. You should be able to describe how a standing wave is set up. You should be able to state the differences between standing waves and progressive waves. You should be able to draw the first four harmonics on a string instrument and also say how they link together with double, triple and quadruple the frequency of the fundamental. You should also be able to explain what resonance means and when it occurs on a string instrument. And you should understand the equation V is the square root of T over mu. And you should be able to apply the above equation to exam questions. In the next video, we will look at how standing waves are set up on wind instruments, which are longitudinal waves.